7 Ways to Legally Avoid Taxes, Tax Loopholes of the Rich Hello to my amazing subscribers! I welcome you to the Fun Facts channel. Today I am back with another amazing video. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can click the bell icon so that you never miss a video from us. In this video we will be talking about 7 ways in which you can avoid taxes, so without further ado, let's get into it. There are two parts to making a whole lot of money. The first is earning it, and the other is keeping it. However, making money can be quite difficult due to a lot of taxes. You should now understand legally how to make a whole lot more and pay less tax. The best thing you can do for the poor is not be one of them. Are you one of the millions today who keep working harder and harder and receive less and less in return for their efforts? Just where does that money seem to go? And where does all your time go? Many today are waking up to the realization that they have somehow gotten old and their lives so far have only been about striving, with nothing to show for all the years of work. The biggest expenses for the average American are interest and taxes. Both of these expenses put your money in someone else's pocket. The interest that you pay on your home mortgage, car loan, credit card, and the like is income to someone else. The taxes you pay goes to support the government without much input from you. In other words, the typical middle class wage earner works to pay other people. And worse yet, the average American seemingly has no say in how the money is spent. No wonder you feel out of control sometimes. The middle class dream has become a nightmare. You can't work harder at your job and expect to get ahead. And even worse, you might not know this until it's too late. You might find out that you have no future just as you're ready to retire and enjoy your golden years. That's when you find out the pension you hoped for is gone. That's when you find out your house costs you more in property tax and U.S. insurance than you can afford. And, too late, you find out you now have outdated skills for the job market. This is one nightmare that does not end when you wake up. You don't even know you're in the nightmare until you wake up and find out you have no money and no future. The good news is that there still is a dream possible no matter where you are today. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter how much money you have now. It doesn't matter how much debate you have. But the way to realize the dream and end the nightmare is not the way your parents thought of you. The plan of your parents, work hard, save your money, and collect your retirement, was effective for them, but it does not work now due to federal tax, state tax, and social security taxes, which are $331,250, $107,680, and $29,661. Here are the seven ways to avoid taxes legally. Number one, build a corporation. The sole proprietor of a plumbing shop was sentenced to 13 months in prison, three years of supervised release for tax evasion, and ordered to pay approximately $130,000 in restitution to the IRS. The business owner willfully attempted to evade paying his federal income taxes by skimming gross receipts of his plumbing business and paying personal expenses from his business accounts and claiming them as business expenses. As part of his tax evasion scheme, he instructed several of his employees to solicit checks from clients payable in his name rather than in the name of the business. He then cashed these checks and did not deposit the monies into his business bank account. Since this money was not recorded on the books of the business, nor deposited into the business's account, he did not include these gross receipts on his income tax return. He also deducted personal expenses as business expenses and similarly lowered the figures on his Schedule C profit, thereby substantially reducing his tax for tax years 2010 through 2021. Number 2. Tax Havens Tax havens have become a defining feature of the global financial system. Multinational companies can use various schemes to avoid paying taxes in countries where they make vast revenues. In new research, my colleague Peter Jansky and I estimate that around $420 billion US dollars in corporate profits is shifted out of 79 countries every year. This equates to about $125 billion US dollars in lost tax revenue for these countries. As a result, their state services are either underfunded or must be funded by other, often lower-income taxpayers. It contributes to rising inequality, both within countries and across the world. 
A research says that lower-income countries on average lose at least as much as developed countries relative to the size of their economies. At the same time, they are less able to implement effective tools to reduce the amount of profit shifted out of their countries. Number 3. Print Money State spending is part of the state's fiscal policy. Deficit spending involves the state spending into the economy more than it receives in taxes and other payments within a certain period of time, typically the budget year. Deficit spending increases the money supply. The extent and the timing of budget deficits are disputed among schools of economic analysis. The mainstream view is that net spending by the public sector is inflationary so far as it is financed by the banking system, including the central bank, and not by the sale of state debt to the public. The existence itself of budget deficits is generally considered inflationary by mainstream economics, so policies are prescribed for the lowering of the deficit. While heterodox economists such as post-Keynesians treat deficit spending as one of many fiscal policy options. Number 4. Using Debt Your tax planning goal is to pay the least amount of tax that is legally possible. You can reduce your ultimate tax bill by attacking two fronts. First, take full advantage of every available deduction, both business and personal, to reduce your taxable income. Then, once you determine the tentative tax due, claim every tax credit that is available to you. When you want to reduce the amount of tax that you owe, you will find that tax credits are nearly always better than tax deductions. A credit reduces your tax bill dollar for dollar, whereas the value of a deduction is affected by your marginal tax rate. This is an important principle to remember when evaluating whether it is better to claim a credit or a deduction when both are available for a given expense. Number 5. Shell Companies A shell corporation is a company or corporation that exists only on paper and has no office and no employees, but may have a bank account or may hold passive investments or be the registered owner of assets such as intellectual property or ships. Shell companies may be registered to the address of a company that provides a service setting up shell companies and which may act as the agent for receipt of legal correspondence. The use of a shell company in a tax haven makes it possible to move profits to that shell company in a strategy called tax evasion. A United States company buying products from overseas would have to pay U.S. taxes on the profits, but to avoid this, it may buy the products through a non-resident shell company based in a tax haven where it is described as an offshore company. The shell company would purchase the products in its name, mark up the products, and sell them on to the U.S. company, thereby transferring the profit to the tax haven. The products may never actually physically pass through that tax haven and be shipped directly to the U.S. company. As the shell company is not based in the United States, its profit is not subject to U.S. income tax, and as it is an offshore company in the tax haven jurisdiction, it is not taxed there either. Under the tax haven law, the profits are deemed not to have been made in the jurisdiction, with the sale deemed to have taken place in the United States. As U.S. personal income tax is significantly less important than corporate income tax, U.S. company executives would claim a salary, or fees, consulting fees, etc., from the company's profits. Number 6. Death Tax While the use of terms like death duty had been known earlier, Specifically calling a state tax the death tax was a move that entered mainstream public discourse in the 1990s as an attempt to give it a devastating new nickname in a manner similar to a neologism. This happened after a proposal was shelved that would have reduced the threshold from $600,000 to $200,000 after it proved to be more unpopular than expected and awakened political interest in reducing the tax. For some reason, surveys suggest that opposition to inheritance and estate taxes is even stronger with the poor than with the rich. Many opponents of the estate tax refer to it as the death tax in their public discourse, partly because death must occur before any tax on the deceased assets can be realized, and also because the tax rate is determined by the value of the deceased person's assets rather than the amount each inheritor receives. Neither the number of inheritors nor the size of each inheritor's portion factors into the calculations for a rate of the estate tax. Proponents of the tax say the term death tax is imprecise and that the term has been used since the 19th century 
to refer to all the death duties applied to transfers at death, estate, inheritance, succession, and otherwise. Number 7. Capital Gain Tax A nation may tax at a lower rate the gains on investments in favored industries or sectors, such as small businesses. Tax can be reduced when property ownership is transferred to family members in the low-income bracket. In the U.S., if in the year of selling the property, your family member falls within to 10-12% to ordinary income tax bracket, he or she could avoid the capital gains tax entirely. There may be accounts with tax-favored status. The most advantageous let gains accumulate in the account without taxes. However, taxes may be owed when the taxpayer withdraws funds from the account. Selling an asset at a loss may create a tax loss that can be applied to offset gains realized in the future and avoid or reduce taxes on those gains. Tax losses are a business asset, but the business must avoid sham transactions, such as selling to oneself or a subsidiary for no legitimate purpose other than to create a tax loss. Tax may be waived if the asset is given to a charity. Tax may be deferred if the taxpayer sells the asset but receives payment from the buyer over a period of years. However, the taxpayer bears the risk of a default by the buyer during that period. A structured sale or purchase of an annuity may be the way to defer taxes. In certain transactions, the basis or original cost of the asset is changed. In the U.S., the basis for an inherited asset becomes its value at the time of the inheritance. Tax may be deferred if the seller of an asset puts the funds into the purchase of a like-kind asset. In the U.S., this is called a 1031 exchange and is now generally available only for business-related real estate and tangible property. Now, you must have got an idea on how you can avoid paying taxes. If you have any questions, you can let us know in the comments below. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a like. Hoping to see you in the next video. Goodbye.